Hey class, Mr. Hanji here. For today's lesson, we're going to be taking a look at section 16.2, which is going to deal with arc length and radian measure. Now, for today's lesson, we have two learning goals. Our first learning goal is that you will be able to find the length of an arc. And our second learning goal is that you will be able to convert degree measures to radians. So we're going to talk about arc lengths, how you find the measure of them, and then we'll talk about how to convert a degree measurement to a radian. So that is our goal for today and what we'll be taking a look at in this video. So let's first talk about arc length and arcs and then we'll talk about radians. So an arc is an unbroken part of a circle consisting of two points called the endpoints and all the points on the circle between them. So if we talk about the arc AB, so A and B are the endpoints for this arc and all the points in between them. So think of it as like a line segment, but in this case we're talking about an arc part of a circle. So it's not a straight line because it's on a circle, so it's curved. That's why we call it an arc and not a line segment. So arc AB would be this part right here. Now arc length is understood to be the distance along the arc. So when we talk about the length of the arc, that is this distance right here. So we're going to talk about how you figure out the measure of that red part. So to figure out the arc length, we're going to use the following formula. The arc length S of an arc with the measure m degrees and radius r is given by the formula S equals m over 360, or m divided by 360, times by 2 pi r. So this S equals m over 360 times by 2 pi r is going to be what we use to figure out the measure of the arc, or the length of the arc. Now, the two things that we need to figure out when we go through and find the length of an arc is we need to know the radius, which they will tell us right here with a line going from the center of the circle to the edge. They'll tell us how long that radius is. And then this M is going to be the measure of the arc, meaning the measure of the angle that the arc forms. So they will tell us the degree measure of this arc, and that's going to be out of 360, because the circle is 360 degrees around. So whatever this measure is, whether it's 45, 255, or whatever, it's going to be that 45 out of 360 parts. So how this formula is formed, okay, is because to go a full circle around, it's 360 degrees. So whatever measure the arc is, degree-wise, say 45, that's 45 out of 360 parts, kind of like a percent. And then this 2 pi r is that circumference. So we're going to take whatever portion out of 360 and multiply it by the overall circumference. So with that said, we are going to use specifically just this formula to help us go through and answer our questions for example one. So m over 360 times by 2 pi r. We need to know the measure, degree measure of the arc, and then also the radius. So with that said, let's move on to example one. All right, so now example one is going to ask us to go through and find the arc length. Okay, so that's the same thing for parts A through F, where we just need to figure out the length of the arc. Now, what that means is we're going to use this formula of S equals M over 360 times by 2 pi R. So I'm just getting that formula from what we talked about here on the arc length. So if we look at example 1, part A, we need to figure out the length of this arc right here. Now, they tell me that the radius is 8 and that the measure of the arc is 45 degrees. So for this specific problem, 
I know my M value is 45, and I know my R value is 8. So now that I know those two numbers, we can plug those in for M and R here, and then we can go through and solve. So M is 45, so it's going to be 45 over 360 times by 2 pi r, and our radius is 8. Now, a couple things is you can go through and multiply this all at once. Um, I am going to do one slight simplifying before we go through and plug it all in our calculator. So we have 45 over 360 times I'm going to multiply this 2 and this 8 to give me 16 pi. So I'm going to use my calculator then to go through and calculate this. I'm going to use parentheses for both of these parts. So I'm going to put the fraction in a parentheses, and then I'm going to put the 16 pi in a set of parentheses. So parentheses, 45 divided by 360, end parentheses. And then we can do multiply, parenthesis, 16 pi, end parenthesis. And then that's going to give me, and we get 6.28. Um, let's round to the nearest tenth. So we're going to go one decimal place. Because this is 2.8, that means we're going to round the 2 up to 3. And that is my answer for example one. And that is how you go through and find the arc length. So use the measure of the arc, which they will tell you the degree measure, and then use the radi or the radius to help you go through to plug in your M and your R, and then just go through and calculate your equation. So let's go through and do another one. For some extra practice. All right, for B, they tell me that my radius is 15 and that my measure of my angle is 90 degrees. So if we are thinking the S equals M over 360 times 2 pi R, I know that my R value is 15 and that my M value is 90. So I'm going to plug 90 in for M, and I'm going to plug 15 in for R. So we have 90 over 360 times 2 pi 15. I'm just going to simply multiply the 2 and the 15 first. So we still have 90 over 360 times 30 pi. That will help me go through and type it into the calculator a bit easier. So if we go through and calculate this, let's do this 90 over 360, so 90 divided by 360, in parentheses, then times, parentheses, 30 pi, in parentheses. When we go through and do that, we end up with 23.56 for rounding to the nearest tenth. So that 5, 6, that 6 indicates we need to round 5 up to 6. Therefore, giving us 23.6 kilometers for the measure of the arc. So that is how you go through and calculate arc length. Um, just have to know the measure of the angle and know the radius, plug those values in for M and R, and then go through and calculate that equation. All right, so that is really kind of the gist of it for example one. Um, the same thing is what you're going to do for parts um, C, D, E, and F. Um, they just give you a different type of scenario, whether it's 
300 degrees and then 11 centimeters or 255 degrees and 7 centimeters, 60 degrees and 4 yards, 131 degrees and 15 meters. Okay, all of those situations, you're going to take that M value, the degree measure, plug that in for M, take your radius and plug that in for R, and then go through and calculate. So, because I feel and hope that these should feel fairly straightforward, I'm going to leave parts C, D, E, and F for you to do. They are done in my completed notes, just to kind of give you a quick glance. So they are done here in case you want to see how to go through and do these ones, how to set up the formulas, and then see if you can actually go through and calculate them correctly. But C through F, I will leave for you guys. We won't run through. But that is how you go through and find the length of an arc using the formula. All right, so with that said, let's move on to example two, where we are gonna continue finding the arc length. The difference for example two is that we have more of a story problem situation. So let's take a look at example two, and then we will talk about radians. All right, for example two, part A, it says, the minute hand of a clock is 10 inches long. To the nearest tenth of an inch, how far does the tip of the minute hand travel as time progresses from 12 o'clock to 12.15? So if you think about a clock, a circle clock, we're wanting to figure out how much the hand has traveled, the tip of that hand. We want to figure out that arc length from 12 o'clock to 12.15 and the length of that minute hand is 12 or 10 inches long. So if we are thinking about this real quick, we need to use that S equals M over 360 times 2 pi R. So we need to know what our M value and our R value is. Real quick here, the length of the minute hand is going to be the radius. So 10 is our R value. So all we have to do is figure out what our M value is. We need to figure out the measure of the angle that that arc length is. So what we're gonna do here is look at the 12 to 1215. How many minutes elapsed from 1215 or from 12 to 1215? Okay, 15 minutes is how much time elapsed. And then how many minutes are there in one full circle of the clock? How many minutes are in and out? Okay, 60. So we get 15 over 60. That's going to give me how many parts is occurring from that time frame. So if we go through and quickly calculate 15 divided by 60, we end up with 0 0.25. What we're gonna do then is take that 0 0.25 and we're gonna multiply it by 360 to tell us how many degrees that is. So if we do 0 0.25 times 360, in 15 minutes, that amount of degrees that is, is 90 degrees. So in 15 minutes, that minute hand moved 90 degrees. So now that I know my degrees, that tells me my M value. So that is the number I'm going to plug in for M. And we already have our value for R, so I have everything I need to go through and calculate this. So it's going to be 90 over 360 times by 2 pi 10. If I go through and simplify that real quick, it's 90 over 360 times by 
20 high. So we're going to go through and type this into our calculator. So if we do parentheses, 90 divided by 360, end parentheses, times parentheses 20 pi, we get 15.7. And that is our answer for how far the minute hand has traveled from 12 to 12.15. So, doing the same thing we did in example one, where we use this s equals m over 360 times 2 pi r, the length of the minute hand tells us our r value, and then we went through and figured out what our, the measure of the angle should be from 12 to 12.15. So, that is how you do example two, part a. Just for matter of purposes and give us another example, let's take a look at part B. So for part B, we have the minute hand of a clock is six inches long. So that means the six inches is going to be my R value. So R equals six. So the nearest tenth of an inch, how far does the tip of the minute hand travel? as time progresses from 12.15 to 12.45. So if we want to figure out 12.15 to 12.45, what the degree measure is, how many minutes have occurred from 12.15 or 2.15 to 2.45? Okay, 30 minutes have occurred. And then how many minutes in one full circle? 60. So if we do 30 over 60, we get 0 0.5 for our decimal when we actually go through and calculate that. So what we're going to do is take 0 0.5 times it by 360 and we end up with 180. So, now that I have 180, I have my M value. We have our R value being six. So now that I have all of that information, we can plug everything into the formula. So if it's M over 360, it's going to be 180 over 360 times by two pi R, and we know our R value to be six. So if I go through and simplify this real quick, 180 over 360 times 12 pi. We go through and use our calculator then. We do 180 divided by 360 times by 12 pi. We get 18.84 which is just going to leave us with 18.8 for our answer. And that is how we go through and find the arc length on a clock when you're given the measure of the minute hand and they tell you how much time has progressed. So if you ever come upon one of these questions, go through and figure out how much time has elapsed from your start to your end time you're going to take that amount of time, divide by 60, because that's how many minutes occur in one full time around the circle. That number, when you go through and divide that, multiply it by 360, and that will tell you how many degrees has occurred. Once you know that, you can plug that in for M, and you can plug in for R what they tell you the length of the minute hand is and then go through and calculate. All right, so with that said, that is it for example two on finding the arc length for a situation for a clock. All right, so with that said, we only have one thing left to talk about today, and that is going to be radians. So I'm gonna move this up. 
So we can just focus specifically on radians. Now, the constant of proportionality for the proportional relationship is m over 360 times by 2 pi. This is defined to be the radian measure of the angle. The radians is a pure measure of an angle based off the radius. So what they're going to do is they're going to give us a degree measure and we're going to convert that to radians. Radians is not something we're going to do or deal too much with right now. That's more something you're going to be exposed to in Algebra 2. We're just going to introduce how you convert a degree to a radian. 2 pi represents one full time around the circle. Okay, so 2 pi is 360 degrees. So whenever you see the answer of 2 pi, you've gone around 360 degrees. So this m over 360 is how many parts out of 360 we've gone around, and then we'll evaluate it multiplied by 2 pi. So we're going to use that formula to help us go through and answer our questions today. Now, example three wants us to convert each angle measure to radian measure. So we're going to change the degrees to a radian. Now, when we're changing something to radian, you have to leave pi in the answer. So we're going to use this m over 360 times by 2 pi. m just stands for the measure of the degree. So 180, 60, 90, 45, 30, and then 12. So if we go through and calculate for A, we have 180 degrees. So we're going to plug 180 in for M. So we have 180 over 360 times by 2 pi. Now, there's a multitude of ways that we can go through and calculate this. The way that I'm going to suggest is let's go ahead and multiply the 2 in, which means that we're going to multiply this 2 to the 180. So we're going to do 180 times by 2, and that's going to give us 360. So this becomes 360 over 360 pi. So what we need to do from here is to go through and calculate this fraction. We're going to simplify this fraction. So if we do 360, ABC 360, if I simplify that, that simplifies down to 1. So this just becomes 1 pi. So the name of the game for when you're changing things to radians is simplifying fractions. Okay, we don't want a decimal for this. We actually want to go through and simplify. So 360 over 360 simplifies to just 1. A few ways you can do this. Okay, you could probably Google simplify a fraction, whether it's 60 over 360. You could probably Google how to, what the simplified answer of that is. If you have a TI-30 like this calculator, what's going to be really helpful for you is the ABC button. So this button right here, you just type in the number that's on top, in this case 360, hit ABC, and then 360, and then you hit enter, and it will simplify. For example, if I were to do 25 ABC over 50, so 25 over 50 simplifies to 1 half. So that's how you would simplify fractions in this calculator. Let's say you have a graphing calculator. Um, it may be a touch different. If you have a TI graphing calculator, the process is the same. Um, let's go with 25 over 50. If I do 25 divided by 50, before you hit enter, you want to hit the math button, which is below the second and the alpha. Okay, what we want is this first one, this FRAC, the fraction. So if I hit enter, 
when I'm highlighted on that, that's going to bring that in. And when I hit enter, it goes through and simplifies the fraction for me. So one half. So if I did 360 divided by 360 fraction, it gives me one. So that is how you're going to go through and simplify it. Again, I am sure you could probably go out there and Google what is the simplified version of 25 over 50. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and move on to our next example, which is B. So it's 60 degrees. So we're going to plug 60 in for M. So it's 60 over 360 times by 2 pi. What I want to do for this one is, again, go through and multiply the 2 to the 60. So 60 times 2 gives me 120. So I have 120 over 360 pi. So I want to go through and simplify this 120 over 360. And that simplifies down to one third. Now, one third pi is just going to be pi over three. So pi over three is going to be our answer for the radian measure of 60 degrees. Now, again, to show you how to get your fraction, in the TI-30 calculator. So if we have 120 over 360, do 120, then hit ABC, and then 360, and then that would give us one third. Now, some of you may have calculators where it doesn't simplify fractions right off the bat, but it will convert a decimal to a fraction so if you need help with that or any guidance on that, by all means, let me know, and I'll be more than happy to help you with that. So the way that you can do that on the TI-30 is you do 120 divided by 360. So that gives me 0 0.3 repeating. Off the top of my head, I know 0 0.3 repeating is 1 third, but if I did second, Okay, where this PRB button is, there's this F to D that's going fraction to decimal or decimal to fraction. Because I have a decimal, it's going to change it to a fraction, so one third. So that's something else you can look for for whatever calculator you have. All right, so let's continue on. For the 90 degrees, we're going to plug 90 in for M, so 90 over 360 times by 2 pi. If we do 90 times 2, this becomes 180 over 360 pi. So if I go through on my calculator, if I do 180 over 360, that simplifies to 1 half. So this is 1 half pi, which turns into pi over 2. So the radian measure for 90 degrees is pi over 2. All right, continuing on for part D. So we have 45 degrees, so we're going to plug... 45 n for m, so 45 over 360 times by 2 pi. 45 times 2 is 90, so it's 90 over 360 times by pi. So we're going to use our calculator. If we do 90 over 360, that simplifies to 1 fourth. And then if we multiply the pi in, it's pi over 4. 
So the radian measure of 45 degrees is pi over 4. So that is how you go through and convert degrees to radians. You would just run through and do the same thing for 30 degrees and 12 degrees, um, where you would go through and use the equation. So you would do 30 over 360 times by 2 pi, and then 12 over 360 times by 2 pi, um, just to set that up for us. So it's 30 over 360 times by 2 pi. If we go through and calculate that, 2 times 30 is 60, and 60 over 360 is going to simplify to 1 6, or pi over 6. And then if we end with f, so it's 12 over 360 times by 2 pi, you would do 12 times 2, so that would give you 24. So it's 24 over 360. You're going to go through and simplify that fraction, and then multiply pi in, and that gives you pi over 15. And that is how you go through and convert something from degrees to radians. Now, like I said, radians is going to come more in play in Algebra 2, especially when you talk about the unit circle. So when you get to the unit circle, we talked about those special right triangles, the sine, cosine, and tangent of 30, 60, and 45 degrees. That was that 1 half, square root of 3 over 2 and such. The other thing you're going to see it come into play with is radians. So pi, pi over 3, pi over 2, pi over 4, pi over 6 are going to be extremely common radian measures that you see when you get to algebra 2. So example 3 talks about how you go through and convert it from angles or degree measure to radians. So just do that degree measure over 360 times by 2 pi, multiply the 2 in, simplify the fraction, and then apply the pi. Now, real quick before we wrap up, because it's been a minute before we talked about arc length. So I want to go back real quick to example one and refresh your memory on how to find the arc length. Okay, so we're going to run through C real quick. We want to use that formula, the S equals M over 360 times by 2 pi R. M stands for the measure of the angle of the arc length, or of the arc. So that would be 300 in this case. And then R is going to stand for the radius, which in this case is 11. Okay, so like over here, 255 is the degree measure of the arc. And then the radius is 7. So now that I have my m and my r, we're just going to plug those values in. So it's 300 over 360 times by 2 pi 11. So for d, that would be 255 over 360, because m over 360, we know m to be 255, times by 2 pi r, and I know my r value to be 7, so it's 2 pi 7. Then you just go through and multiply that all together in your calculator, and for c, we would get 57.6 if you went through and calculated that out. And for D, we get 31.2. So that's just a quick refresher on how you go through and find the arc length. Okay, you want to go through and use this formula on the top of the first page of 
the 16.2 notes, S equals M over 360 times by 2 pi R. M stands for the measure of the arc angle. They will tell you that. And then R stands for the radius. Plug in that value for M and for R, and then go through and calculate. And then we wrapped up with radians, where we used this M over 360 times 2 pi R. So you took the measure of the angle, plug that in for M, multiply the 2, simplify your fraction, multiply the 2 in, simplify your fraction, and then apply the pi. So that is how you go through and find the length of an arc and how you go through and convert a degree measure to a radian. So that is it for today on our lesson for section 16.2. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope this made sense. As always, if you ever have any questions or need help with anything, please just let me know next time you see me or shoot me an email and I'll be more than happy to help you. Be sure to reference back to this video or my completed notes as you work on the homework. Otherwise, that's it for today. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you have a great day. And just let me know if you need any help. All right, bye.